Hi, I'm Corey with Gold Rush Expeditions, and this is the Elkhorn Mine. What you've got here is probably one of the most historic sites in Montana, and we've been all over top to bottom. This is one of the coolest spots that you will see, and it's got some of the coolest history you will ever see. We're up here at the Upper Elkhorn Mine today. Unfortunately, this site is fading quickly. We were up here three, four, five years ago, been up here a few times, and buildings keep falling down, things are getting lost, but the key element of any historical mine site is, what do you think the key element might be? It's the mine. And there is a large adit up here that connects in with the lower adit down below. Now this adit hasn't been open in I don't know how long. It's ugly, but it would take a backhoe and you could open it up and you would be into some levels and stopes that haven't been seen for probably 50 or 60 years. So let's go take a look at the rest of the Elkhorn site. The Elkhorn is likely one of the most productive but undervalued mines in all of the western states. The old gold and silver mine is documented to have over 14 miles of drifting and workings on at least three well-defined levels. So we are inside the Elkhorn mine. We're in Montana. I'm in my first drift that comes off to the right. So we've probably come in about 200 feet into the added entrance, and then we've taken a right into this drift. As you can see, maybe not, I'm wearing big tall uh, irrigation boots because it is wet in this mine. But the amount of quartz and pyrite and gold is amazing. It is one of the largest gold mines ever to be seen in Montana and still contains billions of dollars in reserves of gold, silver, and copper. The Elkhorn is a mine of rich values and history. A whole lot of history and a whole lot of mine up here. Mine is the key piece. To 1882, the transporting and processing of ore was very difficult. Ore was transported by wagon to Utah, then by train to California, and finally by ship to Swansea, Wales, where it could be smelted. In the early 1900s, a railroad was completed to facilitate transportation of the valuable ore from the Elkhorn. So what I've got here, which there's not a lot of up top, is a piece of rail out of the upper Elkhorn here. This thing is huge. You can see it's small, but it barely moves. In 1893, the price of silver crashed, and many mines in the area, as well as the Elkhorn, were closed. A majority of those mines never recovered from the crash, but not the Elkhorn. The Elkhorn was reopened in the early 1900s when the Adana vein was discovered. This vein became the major producer for the mine. The mine and camp can be broken down into two main sections. The upper camp, where the Idana vein is located, and the lower camp, where the old mill, haulage tunnel, and the ghost town of Coolidge sit. The Elkhorn was a major producer in its time, yielding over 52,000 tons of ore. Could these claims be responsible for the next mining billionaire in the United States? Only time will tell. <laughs>